Hello everyone. This is a quick video to explain some of the basics of using Logger Pro to create a manual graph. We'll also look at how to create a calculated column uh, and to create a second page where you can uh, display a second graph. The first thing you should do in Logger Pro is to define what your X value is with a unit and what your Y value is with a unit. In order to do that, go ahead and click on the column heading for X. This will bring up your, um, your column definition page. Uh, give it a name. I'm going to say that this is time on the x-axis. For the short name, I'd like you to use the variable that time the, that particular name or that particular uh, uh, measurement would be in a formula. So in this case, a small t. And in this case, the unit would be a small s for seconds. So we're going to hit done there, and you'll see that the t uh, column heading has changed to time in seconds, and so has the uh, the axis for the uh, the excuse me the label for the x-axis. We're going to do the same thing for y. I'm going to make the name uh, in this case displacement. Uh, our short name for this will be an x, and our unit uh, I'm going to put as a standard unit for meters. Okay. I should also point out that while we're here, all three of these boxes, the name, the short name, and the units. There is a drop-down box here that you can use to insert lowercase Greek letters. For example, theta, if you had an incline that you were putting on one of these axes, axes, excuse me, uh, an angle. Uh, and that same thing happens with the uh, short name and the unit. So you can insert, there's a degree sign on the top, Greek lowercase, Greek uppercase, subscripts if you had a subscript. Um, for example, like uh, V1 or V2, that sort of thing, and a superscript if you needed to add exponents. That's when you would need that. So I'm going to hit done here. Now you can see it says displacement in meters. Um, on the y-axis at the top of the column here, it says X in meters, but that's only because this, col this uh, is not open wide enough. So I will open this so we can see displacement. There we go. All right, so um, I'm going to make up some data here. I've already got some made up, so I'm going to put the data in here. You obviously will have experimental data to use, but I'm just putting in some data so we can see what happens when we... Uh, Okay, so there's, there are some data points for us. Um, hopefully you can see the shape of that. That is a curve. It's a parabola. Uh, it's one of the four uh, relationships that we talked about. Uh, so uh, we need to fix a few things first. Um, we still obviously have our, our axes labeled, which is very important, label with unit in parentheses. Um, we need a table. We need, excuse me, we need a title here. So if you double click on the graph, anywhere on the graph itself, it will bring up a graph options. And one of the things you can choose is the title. So let's type in displacement versus time. It's always Y versus X. And we're going to hit done here. And you'll notice I now have the appropriate title. Your title should always be Y versus X. You do not need to put units in your title. The next thing we do is need to scale our graph properly so that the, um, the scale of the graph goes from the lower left to the upper right. We use up the entire graph paper. In order to do that, there is a button at the top of the page. It says Auto Scale. It's this large A up here in the menu. If we click on Auto Scale, you will notice it scales all the data from smallest to largest using up as much of the graph paper as we possibly can. Um, those are the major things we need to do. Uh, add a title, uh, make sure your axes are labeled, and uh, make sure you've auto-scaled the graph so you're using up as much of the graph paper as possible. The next thing we need to do, uh, which is more statistical, is to put a, a best fit line or a best fit curve on this graph. We already mentioned uh, that this looks like a parabola, so I'm going to uh, fit a parabola to it. There are two buttons at the very top here. There is a linear fit button and there is a curve fit button. So this is, since this is a curve fit, 
we're going to click this. If you click either the curve fit or linear fit without choosing an area on the graph like this, that would, that would choose a particular section of your data. If you do not choose a particular section of your data, it's going to curve fit or linear fit all of your data. If you want to curve or linear fit only portions of your data, you would have to drag, uh, click and drag to um, choose the section. But since we're talking about all the data here, I'm going to curve fit the whole thing. Now you'll notice that you get a, um, a, uh, a smaller version a thumbnail version of your graph here. Below, you'll see a whole bunch of options of curves you can use. Since we're talking about a parabola, this is a quadratic graph. So we're going to choose quadratic. And in order to actually have the fit calculated and printed, we need to try the fit first. So you'll click the Try to Fit button. And it looks pretty good, so we're going to hit OK. And you will see it draws our best fit parabola and it gives us the statistics or the, the um, information for that parabola. Um, while I'm thinking about it, this particular box, when you print it, comes out very, very small. So if you would please uh, double click on this box, click Appearance, and change this font size, say, to a 12 so that it's more easily readable. Hit click OK twice, and now you'll see it's much easier to see. I should point out that this box can be moved anywhere you want it this uh, information for the fit. And you can also remove the fit and remove the box by going to the upper left hand corner and you'll see it turns into an X. I'm not going to do it now but I want to keep my fit. Um, but if you go to the upper left and click on that X that will get rid of the fit and the uh, line on the graph. So as you can see here we have a uh, pretty good parabola. Um, I should point out to you that this correlation right here one, exactly one, means it is a perfect fit. Um, it's probably not a perfect fit here. I know it's not because the numbers are not exact, even though I made them up. Um, it's probably, you know, 0 0.99999 something. Um, so it's not exactly one, but this rounds it off to uh, three decimal places or four significant figures. Okay, so, um, but that correlation should be up. Uh, very close to one if your data actually does fit. So as we can see here, um, the data fits very well and your A, the coefficient, um, is about six. So it's about six T squared. Um, your Y value is about six times T squared. Um, but let's check and see if we can actually prove that even better. Um, and we're going to do that by linearizing this graph. Uh, remember, in order to linearize a parabola, you need to uh, graph y versus x squared instead of just x. So we're going to need to change that uh, x-axis to times squared instead of time. Okay, but first we want to keep this graph, so let's keep this graph and make a new page. So you're going to go up here to Page, Add Page, and we want to copy the current page always because if we don't do that, you're going to lose your data. Um, so we're going to copy the current page. We're going to hit OK. And a new page has been created. You know that because there is a page navigator up here in the upper left. You see if I click, it says page 1, page 2, page 1, page 2. They're the same right now because we just copied it. So here's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and um, X out of this auto fit because we're not going to get a parabola anymore. And now we want to change this to displacement versus time squared. We want to create another column uh, where we have time squared. Now we don't want to do that math ourselves. We want the computer to do it for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the data menu and I'm going to enter, enter a new calculated column since we want the program to calculate the information for us. Okay. So the new name is time, and again, we're going to use that drop-down I just talked about, superscript exponent, oops, not a 1, let's fix that, superscript 2, that gets us time squared, and that is going to be t squared, if we had that in a formula, and the units would be seconds squared. Okay, so we've named 
that new x-axis, but we need to tell the computer what math to do in order to come up with the data for that x-axis, that new x-axis. That goes in this box that says expression. Um, your, it comes with a number of built-in functions, or you can just type in a mathematical expression yourself. Uh, in this case, you want to take what's in the time column and square it. So we're going to use this button here that says variables columns and choose our time column. So now we've said take the information in the time column and now I want to square that information. You probably know from using a calculator that in order to square something you use the caret symbol which is above the 6 squared. If you want to multiply you would use the asterisk and if you want to divide you would use the um, forward slant. Okay, so we're going to hit done, and you will notice now I have a brand new column that says times squared. Okay, so we've got a new we've got a new column, a new data column that says times squared, but I want that to be used on my graph, on my page two of my graph, rather than uh, regular time. So the easiest way to change what you're what you're viewing on each axis is to actually go to the label on the axis double click on it, well actually single click on it, and choose the new label you want. So now we want times square and look we have linearized the data. Now we have a uh, straight line. Uh, you should also notice that our title is now wrong so we need to double click on our graph and say displacement versus time superscript squared. Done. Now your title is correct. Okay and since this is a linear fit, we'll go ahead and do a linear fit. And since I'm doing the whole thing, I don't have to select anything. So my linear fit is there. And notice we have a slope of 5.998, which is a slope of 6, which agrees with what we just talked about before with the, para with the parabola graph, with the quadratic graph. Again, please, if you would, double click on any best fit line boxes or best fit curve and change it to a 12 point type so it's visible, OK, and by the way that was from appearance, click on appearance, double click on the box, click on appearance, choose 12, and hit OK twice and it's much more visible. OK, but make sure your graphs always have everything they should have, which is a, a proper title, uh, Y versus X, whatever is being measured. Each of your axes should be labeled with the appropriate measurement and unit, displacement in meters here, times squared in seconds squared. And again, that is set by double clicking on the uh, column options here, double clicking on the column head, and you can change those if they're not correct. Um, and then putting in your best fit line, either uh, best fit curve or best fit linear uh, fit, and uh, changing this to 12 point. Also, please make sure that when you print your graphs for turning in in class, please make sure that they are printed landscape on your paper because um, uh, portrait uh, graphs and data tables are much too small to see. And one last thing, you'll notice my data set is kind of cut off here. If I go to page and auto arrange, I will now have my full data table and my full graph. Okay, so those are those are the basics of uh, Logger Pro um, use in terms of entering manual data um, and a calculated column as well. Okay, thank you.